<clears throat> Lord, I just pray right now that those that are here will be encouraged and continue to run the race in this. Lord. Okay, I'm going to start off uh, with the dream that I had. In this dream, I was on this upper level area. There was these guys that kind of came against me to stop me from going. And as I kept on going, <clears throat> I noticed that the floor started having holes in it where I could possibly fall through. So as I'm going, I noticed like everybody else isn't playing by these rules. Like these holes aren't there for that person. <clears throat> so as I'm going, this one lady, she says, you've lost the spirit to run. And I'm not talking about, you know, this really running an actual race. I'm talking about running the race of faith. And um, at that, I just remembered in the dream, just me there, nothing else, just praying to God. It's like, Lord God, just give me the spirit to run. And I'm just kind of like on the ground kind of deal. And I'm just praying right now, those that hear... Lord, that you would just give them the strength to continue running the race and be endured and with power and strength and with love and with faith and a sound mind and, <clears throat> and holiness, Lord. So, uh, after that, <coughs> I uh, started walking, and as I started walking around that same place, every time I would take a step, I would literally be like, Boom! 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 I would just have, like, the strength that was in my legs. And it was kind of like almost shook the area around me kind of deal. It was just that kind of power that I had in the legs to run. And that was kind of the end of the dream there that I remember. Um, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25. Know ye need not that they which run in a race, uh, in a race, run all, but one receives the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. And I just... You know, they run in, they're running a race for a prize. Here, they're run, we're running for an incorruptible crown for eternal life. <clears throat> and I like what he says there. Um, and every man that strives for the mastery is tempered in all things. When you're training for a race, you... Train. I mean, how do I put it in terms? Because I, I, I have ran before. I've been a runner. I still run from time to time. <clears throat> but you limit to what you can do in certain aspects of food and diet. Um, you eat certain foods. You eat healthier. Um, it's kind of like eating the healthy word of God. Um, also, not just that, but you're getting up every day. I know when I was in high school, I would probably be running like six out of the seven days I'd be running. <clears throat> and when it was cross-country season, I would probably be running at least a good five miles every day except for on Sunday. And if I didn't, that means I was running uh, 3.1 and that was a race and that was when you just gave everything you got. And there's going to be times in your life when you're going to have to run with everything you got. You hear me? You're going to have to run with everything you've got. But you don't know when the actual time of that race date is going to be. In the meantime, in the time that you're not actually doing, you know, the race, so you're always in the race, but you're also training. You know, you're training in the Word of God. You're training to get the Word of Knowledge. You're training yourself to be in prayer. If you think about it, our life is like a training session. You know, we got to set time aside, just as, run, as a runner, 
I gotta set time aside to actually go and run. And, you know, there's sometimes when I was training for a marathon, I would run sometimes 13 miles just to train. And a uh, marathon is 26.2 miles of a race. And I tell you, after that big old race was done, you don't have much strength left to you. I mean, literally, my muscles are cramping. I don't really feel like I got anything left after that marathon. I'm just trying to get my legs to keep on going as best as I can. <clears throat> and there's one thing also that I want to mention that the Lord kind of brought to my mind uh, thinking on this topic was there was different stations posted every so often, every couple miles, where you could actually get a drink of water. And there was a, one station where you could, like, a couple where you could actually take a banana. And I think there's that, the importance there is you got to take that time to get the water, drink in the Word of God. Because if you're not taking your time and you're not getting that drink of water from God, Jesus, you're going to start suffering down that race. And before long, you're going to be like, what happened? What happened? I'm like completely drained here. What is going on? And so I'm just like, sometimes there's times when you really need to just dig into the Word of God. You just got to separate yourself and get into that Word of God. And get into the Word and drink in that the Word of God. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes uh, 9.11. I'm not going to read the whole verse here. But the one thing that it says, the race is not to the swift. Um, and it says, nor the battle to the, strong, to the strong and so forth. And I think that's kind of interesting. Because in Hebrews uh, 12, 1 through 2, I'm going to read there. Um, it says, therefore, seeing we also are compressed about with so great a cloud of witnesses... Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so does easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Now, I just read from Ecclesiastes, the race is not to the swift, but what does it say in Hebrews here? Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Each one of us has a race that, we have, that is set before us. Nobody else has that race to run but us. It's kind of like when we're standing before God, it's just us. Okay? <clears throat> so, as we continue to strive to do this race, our life that is set before us, we also have to do it with patience. And like I said before, you got to take those times to stop and get that water and get that refreshing period. There's times that you have to stop and rest in the Lord. <coughs> so, remember, it's not to the swift that's the race, it's to the patient. And of course, uh, patience um, is a whole other topic in itself. But if we just go so swift in our race, we'll eventually just get burned out where we're just so dehydrated of the Lord I'm saying dehydrated of the Lord because we don't have anything of the Lord because we haven't spent that time to be patient with the Lord to wait on Him. Because what does the second chapter say? Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So who is our author and finisher of our faith? It is Jesus. So many times we can, also, we can start getting in that race, and we're trying to race and be so swift about it, like just get up on top of that mountain the fastest we can. But all along, Jesus is like, Hey, I want you right down here. You need to be right here. I haven't given you the strength yet to get up there because that's why you're getting so worried. And so doubtful and fearful and all this stuff because you ran before Christ. Christ is saying, hey, slow down, spend time with me. Because remember, Jesus is the author of your, the finisher of your faith. How are you going to finish a race if 
Jesus is the finisher of our faith. You, you can't you get what I'm saying here? Jesus is the finish line. The finisher of our faith. Um, I guess that's just something I'm kind of picking up right now in the spirit. It's like running the race and being the finisher. Jesus. So. <clears throat> but his crown is to be seated at the right hand in the throne of God. And so, yeah. So, run the race. Um, I, in Psalms 19, 4 and 5, their line is gone out throughout the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. So he's got a son, he's got the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. And you remember that when I was talking about in the dream, how when I came out and I was about ready to run the race, how I just kind of stomped down. Every time I stomped down, I just had that power in my legs every time and I'm just saying it's like <clears throat> where does our strength come from it comes from the Lord and we are to run that race as a strong man so yes so rejoice in this he rejoices as a strong man to run a race so yes the rejoicing of as a strong man let us rejoice in the Lord, for He is the strength, He is a finisher of our faith. If we're going to run a race, let us be that finish line of Christ. So, yes. So, I hope this is a blessing to you. Oh, and Lord, I'm just praying right now, just let them receive an anointing and the Holy Spirit to... Give them the strength, Lord, to just endure with power and to run as a strong man for you, Lord. And to remember to drink in your word and your faith and in your spirit, Lord. And let your power be forever known to the ends of the earth and forever eternity. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. So, run the race of faith. For Christ is our finisher of our faith. Amen.